channel Ansela Desai. Thank you for taking out time, you know, from your busy schedule to be on the channel Kahani's Golden Bites. Thank you for your time, Ansela. Thanks, Jody. It's lovely to be here. Thank you, Ansela. So, Ansela, <clears throat> for the benefit of our viewers, could you just give a little bit of your background, a little brief, so that uh, you know the viewers know a little bit about you, uh, Ansela? Sure. As a summary, my background in Australian corporate life has focused around commercial finance. I have worked across diverse sectors such as retail, logistics, healthcare, and now pharma. This has helped me develop a good appreciation for different industries and unique sort of problems and opportunities they present. I'm currently working as a CFO and company secretary for IDT Australia Limited. Hmm. IDD specializes in high containment, high potency manufacture of active pharmaceutical ingredients and finished dose forms, as well as offering a full suite of contract manufacturing services. We work closely with the government and other pharmaceutical companies as partners to produce medicines for Australia and the international markets. Wow. That's just amazing. That's amazing, uh, Antla. You worked across industries, and you're a CFO and a company secretary at this point in time. That's you know just fantastic. I'm just getting excited. You know, for the next few minutes, the conversation that I'm going to have with you, Antla. <clears throat> so, Antla, uh, in your current role uh, as a CFO and the company secretary of your uh, company of your corporation. Uh, could you just share a little bit about what you're currently focusing on, uh, Ansela? Sure. As IDT Australia is a listed company, the focus of my role is on driving excellence across the business, balancing the long-term strategic goals of the company with short to medium-term tactical elements. Thank you for that, uh, Ansela. Let me just go back in time a little bit. Uh, you did your master's uh, for the studies in Australia, uh, is that correct? That's right. I did my master's of business systems first. Okay. And Antla, so you were an immigrant in a new country. Uh, you have been there without your childhood or your college network, so to speak, your family uh, you know, support systems that, you know, people like me tend to have in our own uh, countries with that we were born into and live and studied. Mm -hmm. So you're an immigrant and you've worked in different industries and now you're a CFO. And let me just add to that, you're a woman. So, you know, it's, it's absolutely amazing uh, that you've achieved all of this in such a short span of time. So did you face any challenges? Let me just start with a very broad question that, uh, you know, did you face any challenges being an immigrant and being a woman uh, in your work space, so to speak? Ansela? I'm a strong believer in a growth mindset and have made, always made this concerted effort to constantly learn. Now, sure, there have been challenges along the way, but by focusing on the topic at hand in a rational way and displaying resilience and tenacity, it's helped me overcome those challenges. Well, you know, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, once again, uh, Ansela, because uh, this is no mean achievement and it's not easy. It's not easy to, you know, focus just on growth and the positives. It's not easy. It's easy, easy to say but you've done it, you've lived it, and you've achieved what you have because you've practiced it. And Ansela, uh, another thing that strikes me is you're in the finance space, across industries, you've been in the finance space. Uh, of course, there is plenty of research across the world by the most prominent of organizations. And you know, there's data and statistics thrown all over the place, but one of them that strikes me is that uh, 2019 was a great year relatively speaking in the history of corporate space where women leaders were at the 
test space or in in terms of percentages you know, percentages i'm talking about in terms of as you look back as one looks back you know I, i'm not thinking it's enough it's about close to about 29% 30% less than that but even in that space there's a high percentage of women leaders in the space of human resources that's the largest space across the globe that uh, women leaders were you know found as directors etc smallest number happens to be happened to be you know in some of the researches in most of the researches is sales and more importantly in pnl now you are a woman leader in that space where there's where there are so few women leaders you're managing finance you know so what was what was your driver in terms of wanting to get in that into that space of finance and you've done very well it's not a, you know you're you haven't done well you're not just clocking hours you know you're not just clocking hours but you've done very well so what is what is some of the reasons why do you think that uh, you know why did you move into the space of finance which is not the norm for a woman and i'm using that the stereotype very purposefully uh, ansel jobi i believe uh, our, our bringing the way we brought up the what we see growing up really shapes our future so i believe finance as a career choice for me was made quite early i've always been interested in numbers my dad worked in finance so it seemed quite natural for me to transition into that space however taking it from being a professional in finance to then a leader in finance that also i think i would give credit to my parents for that they played a prominent role in setting us up for success because from a very early age mom and dad always encouraged us to try different things we participated in many extracurricular activities which taught us how to balance competition with cooperation their unfailing support and encouragement has made me a confident finance professional today lovely lovely to hear that answer you know another thing that uh, that comes out in some of these surveys researches is that and it's common to see is that the number of women in the workforce is fairly large and i'm talking about relatively speaking it's it's fairly large compared to the women leaders so the <clears throat> women workforce is considered to be very competent they're very good in what they do but when it comes to leading uh there are fewer numbers for various reasons for various reasons and uh <clears throat> is there any uh is there something that could given your background that could have played a role in you wanting to lead and wanting to lead and succeeding in leading you know you spoke about your parents your upbringing etc but in terms of leading uh, did you you know do something or there are some people who've been you know introverts and you know started very late and you know wanting to lead or may have been pushed into it etc but uh, in your case ansela did you were you the kind of person who did pass, participate or you know wanted to lead or anything did that play a role anywhere ansela see yes to a certain extent personality wise i am an extrovert so i do enjoy reaching out to people making connections networking that has helped me but i think coming back to your second point about women in general about how women can actually be leaders and how they can feel supported that comes back to women supporting each other and encouragement is important for everybody right, right. we need to feel valued and motivated to keep going on workplaces need to set up training and mentorship programs to support future leaders so they can start learning and developing their skills with an emphasis on gender equality so pathways to success are clear and visible right from the onset i think this will really help women in particular to grow and take that next challenge in leadership ansela given the journey that you've uh, been through in the corporate life and you know your achievements uh is there any advice that you would give to the women workforce uh in their corporate journey you know trying to lead you know because the world is now trying and wanting to see more women leaders so what would be your advice to you know the women workforce 
as I start the journey. And so See, my advice would be uh, work really hard to grow your skills so you can stay on top of your game. That's really important. That's number one. But secondly, back yourself. Be confident and dream big. No one has achieved anything worthwhile by thinking small. Surely you'll fail many times, but don't give up. Just learn from it and surely you will succeed. And Angela, what are your views on, uh, you know, there are some places like the EU, et cetera, that are mandating a certain percentage for women leaders, et cetera, on the board. You know, there, there are very few chairs of the board and in women leaders within corporations. What are your views on, you know, mandating? And this, you, have, you have the US, which is resisting a lot of it. And, you know, for right or wrong reasons, I'm not getting into that, but uh, the EU is very EU is very different. What are your views in terms of mandating, you know, or you know, having a certain percentage? See, in today's corporate world, since the balance is skewed to a greater extent, I think it would be great <clears throat> if we see businesses everywhere continue to encourage achieving a gender balance ratio. Mm -hmm. It's really important right now because we're at the start of the journey. So Angela, I'd like to ask you one more question. Uh, should women and men be treated differently? Uh, what, what's your take on that? You know, do they need to be treated differently? Uh, just because of the, uh, not just the gender part of it, but because there are different numbers, you know, different uh, attitudes towards work and life, etc. Should they be treated differently? Angela, what's your, you know, take on that? For a business or even a team to be successful, I believe it's important to have a diversity of opinion. This provides a balanced view, taking into consideration different perspectives. I believe it's important to give every suitable candidate a fair go. Now, and to only ever select the best person for the job. Everyone should be treated fairly and women need to feel comfortable that there are measures in place for workplace equality. There's no need to be treated differently as long as processes in the business are fair from the onset. Thank you for that, Ansela. You know, makes sense to me. Thank you for that. Ansela Desai, thank you so much for taking out time from your busy schedule and being on this channel and speaking to our viewers. Thank you so much, Ansela. Thank you, Joby. It's been an absolute pleasure.